Baghdad, 2006. Beast and savages are taking over the place. Robbers, terrorists, call them what you want. They told him to get out of the car. It's not cool when you're in a date and there were explosions. Everyone is immigrating. I said goodbye to my girlfriend. I don't feel safe in here. All of them standing in the middle of a street with cameras. Hi, how are you? My name is Safe. I live in Baghdad and I was born in Baghdad. I am the last year of the Dental College at University of Baghdad. All my relatives are out of Iraq. My brothers, Mohammed and Ahmed, they're in the UK and uh, Paris, France. Uh, about my parents, they went to Jordan uh, as we had an apartment there. My father didn't want to leave Iraq, you know, because he built his life there. And then a group broke into my father's office and they threw broken bottles and they hit him on his head. And so my father were hospitalized and then he left Iraq. I stayed in Baghdad to finish my university. Hi there. How's it going? I'm Sama. I'm 19 years old. I'm a student at the Medical College of Baghdad University. Both of my parents are doctors, so of course I want to be like them. I want to be a good doctor. That's my brother, Moan. He's uh, in the medical college with me also. And we're just like best friends. I want to get a global degree in medicine. I want to go to England, maybe, United States, and have the PhD, like the USMLE, United States Medical License. I want to get that. And maybe I go back to Iraq. Hello, friends. My name is Adele. Hi. I live with my parents and uh, three younger brothers. That's my little brother. He always makes me laugh. <laughs> I'm a student at the College of Engineering, the um, Civil Transportation Department. I'm planning to help with the reconstruction work for my country. You see that statue over there? Yeah. Used to be a big picture of Saddam in there. It's dangerous to go to college over here. Many people were killed on their way to school and inside the campus because they were students, no other reason. My friend lost a kidney, another one lost a leg. Before the exams, the door was closed. I was arrested for the car and after four The dean was assassinated. And this one is a graduation certificate for uh, a deceased student. 
Oh, that's the place where uh, this college did have a missile attack there when students died. Who the hell would attack a college? Why would they want to stop the scientific process in Iraq? Is that the reason or we just want to kill people? This photo is every student in the class. That's me over here. I can count like six students that died. That one died. There's one died. That one is also killed. That one died over here. That one, uh, we haven't seen him in a long time. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. I like to talk about my best friend, Zaid. You know this guy is very funny. This guy is wonderful. Uh, I knew him. Uh, we were uh, in a college trip and I was playing guitar and he was playing guitar. And I said, uh, oh, you were playing good. Tell us about your hair. Is that a problem? Back that down. There's, uh, you know, there's you know, many you know, radicals, kind of groups. You know what? Uh, I haven't get such a hair before. I, I was just like safe with his hair. But uh, when I went to Dubai, I stayed three months and I didn't have a problem. But now in Baghdad? In Baghdad, it's dang dangerous to make some such things because the people will think yeah, you might, you might be back, a, you know? a freak or something like this. <laughs> <laughs> I hate weapons. <laughs> My house is a gathering place. Everyone likes to come here to watch movies, or want to play guitar. They feel free because I'm living alone. You know, when somebody's house is empty, like, whoa, partying! The guy, Abdullah, his parents moved to Jordan too. So I, I told him that you can stay with me, I'm, I'm living alone. This is Ahmed, he's waiting for my best friends. They're with me in the college. Yeah, but cheers. Cheers. My first bottle of whiskey in Iraq. <laughs> After we will graduate, we're all planning to leave Iraq and go abroad. So I'm just living for three months and I'm gonna leave. I think this will help. It won't prevent, but it will help. <laughs> years ago, me and my friend Bashar decided to start taking uh, guitar lessons. Bashar is my best friend, he has a big heart, and he's a very good guy. Latif, <laughs> he's the drummer, and I met him about a year ago. Soon after that, we start practicing together. So heavy. So we, we just uh, have to, you have to put some uh, rhythm. Huh? Yeah. We have this plan to uh, make an album and uh, we have a deadline for a gig that we do for our graduation next year. But I have this fear because of the kind of music we're playing. I mean, I can get killed because we're playing devil music or Western music. Even when we practice, we expect someone with an AK-47 to shoot at all of us. I have this idea about a song. Our songs talk about pain, you know, mostly. We write about death, destruction, you know, about darkness. You don't necessarily have to be in Iraq to understand, but 
that's the main source for us to get all the songs. Among the shadows of despair, where terror lies everywhere, death randomly storms into the madness of war. On the theater of bloodshed, curtains won't fall, and I can't bear to witness it anymore. Come on in. Let me show you things I really like. This is the Bible. It's in Arabic. We call it Al Anjil. Um, me and my mom, we read the Bible once. I'm a Muslim, but I think it's one of the sacred books, very much like the Quran. This is a United States medal. It's Operation Iraqi Freedom. This picture is of me and my uncle, Nana, that was taken in my grandma house. When we were kids, uh, we used to live in my grandma house with my parents and my uncle. He's like my godfather. This is my grandma house. Uh, my grandfather built this house. Me and my brother used to climb on this tree. Uh, this is the Ravad Pijda. It's beautiful, I think. Uh, maybe because I, I love this house. Cross the road, uh, that was a military and intelligence unit for the Iraqi army. In the wartime, 2003, there was a bombing across the river on this unit. There was like a shower of uh, missiles and all the windows here was broken. You can see the axes on the uh, windows because of the explosions. Uh, but now, this unit is occupied by the American forces um, and uh, there's training every day. Sometimes bullets came here and again broke the windows. That's my grandma, she's praying now. about to go out and uh, by the way I'm going to, to take the camera with me and uh, I'll try to be careful when taping and uh, not saying anything in English because if anyone from the wrong guys hear me they'd be like saying kill me I wanted to shoot uh, some footage from my neighborhood but it's really dangerous the insurgents are very active in there so uh, I made a hole in the uh, bag and put the camera inside the bag. So if someone look at me, they would think that it's just a normal bag. There was a lot of burnt cars, bullets all around the walls. There was all street filled with garbage because no one can get in the neighborhood, even the workers. All the people in the neighborhood are sick of it, but they cannot do anything. After war, the basics, the essentials of life got really, really messed up. Things began to get more expensive and it's like you won't find potato for like two days, and then all the market is potato. So finally, there was some water. Water began to get dirty, and we only got electricity a few hours a day. Electricity is off now. It's 
been like three years now, and we don't have electricity. I think I have to get some fuel from the car. Once we get the electricity, the other things gotta be better. We're living on generators. Living with generators like living in a tank. Oh. Camera? Right. I'm gonna tell you a secret. Uh -huh. oh, um, there is a there is one girl I like her in college, uh -huh. and uh, I asked her out, and we went out. Honestly, I don't have a girlfriend. Mainly because I'm too shy. I've been more than two years with my girlfriend in a serious relationship. She's my soulmate. We love each other, we like each other, we passionate each other. My cousin, she's coming with other girls. It's just like a blind date, I don't know what to call it. Hi, how's it going? The majority of young people are dating. But uh, still, it's hard for anyone to date in Baghdad. Because uh, it's not cool when you're in a date and explosions happened. So, um, like, there were college mates they meet in college. I saw Noor in the first year in the university. I felt a little crash on her, and she felt the same. We started to talk more in the university, and then we started to talk over the phone more. So we went from being friends to being girlfriend and boyfriend. Today we did some polishing and scaling. <laughs> After we will graduate, her and me intend to engage each other. But before that, she will leave to the United Arab Emirates because the worst parents will live in Dubai. And I will go to my parents in Jordan. And then I will fix meetings with her parents, my parents, and I will engage her. I started the diet because my fiance said, you must lose weight, you must lose weight. I gained weight a lot because, you know, there's nothing to do, only sitting in the house and eating and studying. There is a medical treatment here. For the past two weeks, I've been sitting here in this room, spending all my time studying. Right, right. I decided to get the market in my own. I stayed in Iraq to study, so I should do that really good. Don't 
I was going to meet my friends in college to prepare for the exams, but I couldn't get out today, and uh, I think the reason is, uh, well, why don't you just hear for yourself? The situation here in Iraq is not good. When the electricity is off, study is really hard. When there's no electricity, I put my mobile phone and it's, it's, uh, it's light on the paper and it's too hot, about 40 degrees centigrade. Oh, it's too hot here. I have about five minutes till my uh, final examination. I guess uh, I'm not doing well. <laughs> In the last exams, I couldn't study well because my younger brother was missing for too many hours and I had to go look for him. Everything worked out well, I got involved. But I came back to see there is no electricity, so I couldn't study anything. That's why I didn't pass and I have to go back now and study again. This is the greatest thing. I graduated. I'm a dentist. I graduated with Noor and Abdullah and Ahmed and Ammar together. My university is in one of the dangerous neighborhoods in Iraq. So I called some of my friends to invite them for my graduation and really nobody came. But I was happy with Noor and my friends. <laughs> uh, Sam is my uh, second son. She's the best cook ever. You can never find a woman like her this way. She likes me so cooks. much, so always he encouraged me for I everything like I do. Very much. I, I cook with her sometimes. He used to sit with me when he was young on the table near me while I'm cooking and he used to learn how to do things, ask me always. يعني هاي منشورة موزعينها يعني ولد تبوه من من ديش المنطقة يعني يقول منشورة بالضبط انه تقول الخوط بين الخيار والطماطة ممنوعة او محرمة خلي نقول uh, in some areas now, <laughs> this ad is forbidden, and uh, now we are eating it. Thanks, God, we are all as a family together. But it's a very difficult situation. Today I was outside and it was very... Very dangerous. Dangerous. She used to go to clinic, but now she don't go because it's too dangerous. And some doctors got killed. Two doctors uh, were two killed. Two doctors threats. Um, Both of them, I know them very well. Three of my colleagues were threatened. I was threatened also. It's a very difficult situation, but we have to go. Life must go on and we have to <laughs> continue See, is, our life. This is one of the amazing things that a colleague got killed and we say that uh, life should go on and we have lunch like nothing changed. <laughs> Enemies for Iraq wants Iraq to be brain drained. And they started to kill skilled people. There are some groups that are targeting professors and doctors. 
they want to stop, you know, the scientific process. My father is a physician, and uh, my father's clinic is in a Shia neighborhood, and he's Sunni. Uh, so a gang went to his clinic, and they beat the secretary, and they asked him to guide them to our house. They throw a threatening letter on the doorstep of our house, and it's signed by a Shia, and it said, we will kill you and burn your house because you are a Sunni. You can see the civil war started to happen between Shia and Sunnis. After the damaging fall, the Shia burned a lot of mosques of the Sunni, and the Sunni did the same. People are killing each other because Shia are killing Sunni and Sunni are killing Shia. I don't believe that it's something about religion, it's something that it's all about money. It's like a standard job now, you know, just to kill people. And uh, those people, robbers, you know, terrorists, call them what you want. Insurgents, killers, snipers, murderers, militiamen. They're just killing whoever they like. There is no law, there's nothing. <laughs> So two or three bodies a day taken to the mortuary. It's normal life. You talk about people who were killed today and something really ordinary. Today my brother saw a man killed just at the end of the street. One time I was walking and I see an explosion and pieces of flesh, human flesh were flying everywhere. I saw a gut human gods on that uh, line on the electricity cable. وعندنا أقول يعني طاقات حرامات يعني تروح بالقتل ودمار وهذه مفروض السهم بناء بلدها بتطور بلدها بدل ما يشيلون الرشاشة فيشيلون ليبني شيء ليبني بلدهم القلم والأشياء اللي تبني يعني مو مو اللي دمر البلد. We are suffering from the civil war and we will suffer until each side, the Sunnah and the Shia, will lose. Because in civil war, nobody wins. My friends who were in the last year of the university, most of them decided to leave Iraq because we can't live there anymore because there's no place for us. And now, beasts and savages are taking over the place. Probably this is the last night we're gonna spend when uh, Abdullah and Saif and all of us hanging here. We've been having lots of wonderful nights in this house for five years or more. <clears throat> okay, I think it's over. My life here is over. I finished my college. I'm leaving to Amman, Jordan, to my family, and I'm leaving friends here. This guy, Abdullah, is one of my favorite friends. He was my housemate and we have a great friendship between us. We spent a great life together. My friend, my colleague, my, bro my brother, everything. 
So, mm. I guess that's it. <laughs> I have many, many friends. Most of them is, uh, is uh, out of Iraq. When I received their calls, they told me that we miss Iraq and I tell them, don't come back again. Never think about this, because it's really, it, we are living in hell. Now I'm really sad, because maybe I can see him or maybe I can. I don't know. The educated people in Iraq, all of them now are outside the country, the father in the place, the mother in the place, their sons in, in the place, and nobody is under the same uh, roof. Good people are leaving Iraq, just like uh, Layan. I'm going to leave all my friends, uh, all my family to go to where I can live safely without this dangerous thing. Some of my friends said that we're going to leave for one year and then they didn't come back uh, because the situation gets worse and worse. This is uh, the Sakhar and Wopan. They are going to live in uh, the Kurdish region of Iraq, which is in the north. The situation over there is better because they have been independent from the former uh, regime. My friend here, Bashar, is going there to the north too. How did I leave All of the members of the band keep on immigrating. Now that one is in Syria, and this one is going to the north. That one is in Jordan. It's all in me and Latif to stay over here. So uh, we have to establish a new bassist and guitar player. Medina is still far. How that sir, I bara an achi min jua. Feels like you're in a sinking ship. Everyone is trying just to get out. You feel so alone when you see that all of your friends are leaving. But at the same time, I'm, you know, I'm glad they, they can get out of the country. Eventually, everybody's going to leave Iraq. Everyone good is going to leave Iraq. And who's going to stay there to build the country? going to be the end for this country, for Iraq. Will you leave? Of course I would leave. Uh, of course anyone would want to have a life, would want to you know, enjoy his life and do the things that he was supposed to do and things that he likes. It's my country and I don't want to leave my homeland. I don't want to leave my, my home. It's my life here, my study, and everything I have is still here. Besides, it's not easy to get to work outside Iraq. My father, he's always away looking for a job in different countries, trying right, to get our family to establish a new life somewhere else. But other countries won't let you get in the country easily, because they have a lot of Iraqis, I guess. بس انا ما صار عندي ظروف يعني تهيلي انه انا اروح بيها انه انا زوجة حالة مصرية وهناك امكانياتهم زينة وعندي شغل هناك باختصاص يعني مجرد ان اروح انه انا استلم شقة وشغل يعني هاد شغلات كاملة I go through a lot these days with my girlfriend because you know 
she will go to uh, Dubai. بس انا حخطفها من حخطفها من مرحله اخر يعني شو على حصاني ابيض اه خطفوا بمناسبه انه انخطف هنا يعني عادي بعدين يعني حشوف هالمده من زمن يعني حتاخذ هالمفشي ثلاث اشهر الله يشوفها بخيرك صدق يعني الوضع يعني يتمثل بكلمة ثلاثة حرف خاء وراء وتاء بالانجليزي شنو؟ شيت شنو هذا الشيت؟ اكشوال لايف از شيت هير يعني يعني لايف از شيت هير I went with Latif to the place that we've rented to practice. Hey, Ate, I went and I thank you. We got there, we found out that it's totally destroyed and three people died inside, so... It seems like nothing is wrong with it. Once you get inside, you see it's destroyed. <laughs> That's something really funny, you know. Because uh, I want to be an engineer to take a part of building the country back. We're all waiting for that moment. As our generation will be able to witness that day or will take much longer than that. Because uh, we all know that it's not happening right now. Sean Lawa. As far as music goes, in this moment we've come to this crossroads. There is no place to practice and uh, everyone is now at a separated place that, you know, I don't see a big future. Basement is the place where we used to practice. What's the stairs? Stairs were from here, but I don't know, it's not there now. Uh, something that's telling me that uh, that was a stupid dream about playing music with your friends. But uh, for me, it's uh, it's a need to play music. So I think I'll have to establish a new band. I don't know, you know. I'll find a solution. Let me now talk to you about uh, some artworks my uh, mom and dad uh, collect. That's a famous painting for a famous Iraqi artist, Fayyak Hassan. Um, unfortunately, this uh, painting got uh, hit by a bullet. The American forces broke into my grandma's house. They put explosives and totally destroyed the door. Those are bullets. And uh, this one. Uh, this one. And many others. Uh, room was messed up big time. My pictures, my family pictures. Those things we could never get back. We were afraid that uh, the American force had uh, broke into the house again and there is nothing to protect us. Look at this. That's my grandma's room, you know? She sleeps here. I was just standing outside, just in front of uh, my grandma's house. 
and this soldier just came to the door. He said, how about the area? Do you find it a safe place? I mean... <laughs> what is this? Uh, American military division, they came to my neighborhood, searching from house to house. They're here all the time, they surround our area, and why? They search for uh, weapons like hand grenades and RPGs. I've talked with some of the soldiers for a while. I did my best trying to inform them about who are the people who are doing all the killing. He said that he tried to do anything to help and uh, as a matter of fact I believe him because uh, when the US troops were here it was very safe and as soon as they left the region a lot of uh, gunfire happened, explosion came back. I don't like the American army, I admit that, because they began a mess. It's a total mess. The security problems escalating and in my opinion, I think you should have more army, actually, the U.S. Army. There are soldiers arresting people just because they have thoughts against the American presence here in Iraq, and Iraqis are not allowed to uh, sue the soldiers for whatever action they do. Actually, I can do, I can do nothing, because no one can do anything, because they, they, are, they are the men with the gun. Let's go. I will show you this sculpture. Its name is Iraqi Man. This is the Iraqi Man. You, you can see there is no symmetrical face. This is, has a swelling, and um, this one has atrophy. And you can see no eyes and uh, the neck. Yeah, he's, and, he's, uh, very, he's very yeah. thin. Yeah, thin. It's too too much thin. And he's sleeping on a rock. Yeah, his pillow is that stone, mm -hmm. and he's, he's he's resting on a stone that crashing his his head. And he's the Iraqi. Yeah, this is Iraqi man. My father had many hobbies, and he made many sculptures. Oh, he's fixing his car. It's a field of work that hasn't finished yet. Most families trying to live out of Iraq, but when a person is living 67 years, just like my father, he can't leave his country. He, he, he loves his country. Yeah, he loves his country. But you know, we have to, to leave Iraq as I'm a, a young man. So I'm going to Egypt and stay about one year there to get the hell out of here. As you <laughs> this is your bag. How do you feel leaving Iraq? Maybe we'll see each other in far future or maybe we'll never see each other. Unfortunately, I think it's, uh, it's a hard thing because all old friends are suffering from such things. You are so dear to me, and I think when two people ha have such harmony, then it's difficult, quite difficult to to leave to leave each other. 
I, I don't like to, to say goodbye to you because uh, it's, uh, it's a bad thing. We have, we have a new many many girls from this side. <laughs> 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 what do you want to say to the people who will see this footage? All people in the world have been created by God. We are breathing the same air and drinking the same... No, I think not the same water. <laughs> anyway, I just want chance. And many people here just want only a simple, simple chance to improve themselves. God of this world, he did it to be better than this. I don't know if I'll ever find out or if I ever live to know what it is, but I think it has to be something better. I mean, the truth just lies somewhere. We just have to find it.